Welcome to another episode of We Don't Die, where my goal is to give you evidence that although our bodies will certainly disappear, we survive physical death. I'm your host, Sandra Champlain, author of the book, We Don't Die, A Skeptic's Discovery of Life After Death. Our guest today is spirit medium, Laura Mendelssohn. Seeing spirit uninvited as a child, Laura closed off until her guides pushed her through, and that was over 30 years ago. Laura is the author of several books. She has published in Chicken Soup for the Soul, Devotionals for Women. Laura has been featured as one of the 100 top psychics and astrologers in America. She's the founder of the Soul Psychic Healer Master Certification Program, training people to develop their clairvoyance and medium ability. There's so much great information on Laura's website, so I want to tell you about that too. Her website is spiritmediumlaura.com, and in fact, when you go there, you can actually enter to win a free chance to win a personal reading with her. So, Laura Mendelson, welcome to We Don't Die Radio. Well, thank you for having me, uh, Sandra. It's an honor to be here. Absolute honor and privilege. Thank yeah, you so I feel the same way about you. I really do. And to our listener, if you go to we don't die radio dot com, you can just take a quick peek to see what Laura Mendelson looks like, and you know the beautiful woman that's coming from the voice you're listening to right now. <laughs> you laugh, but you are. You are. You are. Oh, smoke and mirrors, my dear. It's smoke not true. No, it's not true. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I, I feel the same way about me, and it's so easy just to, I don't know, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about some of the things we do in our mind and what we say to ourselves a little later on. But, okay. Laura, tell us, where where are you uh, talking from right now? Where's your home? Well, um, I work from my home office in southeast Florida, in Delray Beach, Florida. I know where that is. I is that do. is that where your father's from? Cause uh, I, I... He lived in Daytona Beach. Okay, all that, right. That was where he was uh, for I think right. the last twenty five years of his life, maybe quite mm. quite a while. He he wanted to live on a um, a community that had its own airport. Dad was a pilot, so he could fly in and out with his little airplane and taxi right up to his backyard. It was pretty cool. So they have that in Daytona Beach, and I'm in uh, just north of Boston. For our listener, if you're wondering where the heck I am, um, in Massachusetts. And so, Laura, tell us a little bit about you, because um, I don't know if people are just born into mediumship or how you how it all started coming. So, if there's any stories you want to share from childhood up till now, and how you got to be the great and wonderful spirit medium and woman, Laura Mendelson. <laughs> Oh, that's so nice. Thank you. Yeah, I like to have fun if you haven't noticed that by now. But. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. It was very, very kind. Um, you know, I take all this for granted. It, I, we were chatting a little bit, everybody, before I got on the, the show, uh, Sandra and I. But, you know, when you're up front to something, it just becomes part of your experience. And you don't, you don't, unless you take the time, you you just start to take it for granted. Oh, yeah, sure, I'm talking to dead people. I'm talking to spirits. Not, they're not dead. They're really living. Um, uh, but as a child, uh, I, I was having experiences that were very frightening to me. Hmm. Uh, I, as a very young child, you, it usually would happen when I was going to sleep at night. Uh, I would, you know, as we go through, our brain waves slow down, we go from our beta mind, and then we go to alpha, then we go to theta. I didn't know what was going on. All I mm -hmm. knew was as I got more relaxed and went into the sleeping phase, which I became frightened of doing, uh, I would hear this buzzing noise that would get louder and louder and louder and louder and louder and louder until it finally just exploded in my head. And then I would see people in my bedroom, and they'd be talking to me. And there was a nice old grandfather type. I assume that was my guide. Uh, but that that was, and then I would get out of bed and run to my mother, and I would try to explain, and she would go, go back to bed, honey, not listening to a word I was yeah, saying. Yeah, right. Because to most people, that's crazy, and that's a little kid's imagination and boogie monsters and things like that. Right, right. And, you know, it could have all stayed like that. Who, You know, I'm sure a lot of children, because children are very um, – close to the veil. They're very close to spirit. My, a lot of children have these experiences. Mind you uh, parents out there listening that if your child is saying that they're seeing things, they probably are. So you should pay a little bit of attention to that. But um, in my case, uh, I did have a near-death experience uh, around that time 
uh, I didn't actually die, but I was trying to teach myself how to swim in a lake in upstate New York. Yeah. And um, I jumped on the water and fell underneath and stayed there, was looking at everybody under the water, thinking, this is cool, not knowing that it's, you know, you can't breathe in water. I start to breathe it in because I'm a, ba a child. Yeah. I don't have the, a sense of danger. And out of my right side comes in this noise again and a white light and a voice that booms in my ear, get out, and pushes me out of the water. And I go running to the shore again, try, finding my mother, explaining to her what happened. And she says, later, honey, I'm having a conversation. Mm. So um, those were my first experiences. Um, I'm saying all this for a reason because it goes back to, uh, you know, what what is really happening? What is the other side like? What is the spirit world about? But I'll get into that later if you ask me. Oh, I'll but ask here, you. Okay. <laughs> because, you know, as a child, we're not projecting anything. We don't understand. We don't have um, an agenda. We're not trying to find anything. You no. know, these things are coming out of nowhere. I have no idea. Um, anyway, everything went dormant because I was begging. You know, I didn't know who or what I was begging, but I just was begging, please stop this because it was scary. Until about 30 years old and... Um, at that time, uh, somebody, a friend of a friend, gave me a book. Uh, it was a metaphysic book talking about living in attunement with your intuition. Mm -hmm. And so I followed my intuition one fine fall day in New York and ended up on a park bench in Central Park. It was safe. Don't worry. There were people around. And I was next to a man I never met before. But turned out that synchronistically, we had a lot of things in common. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm, you know, I'm going somewhere with this, uh, and then he, he and I was seeing the same medium in New York. I was going for these circles. He was going to private sittings with him. We both we both had a lot of similarities. Uh, and then he invited me to another reader that he went to. So I went, and the first thing the reader said is he was a from Cuba, an ex medical doctor from Cuba with a heavy Spanish accent. threw threw out his uh, deck of tarot and said, "Your guides are trying to come through." Now, I didn't know what he was talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, my mother was a medium and a psychic, and she'd been, you know, all her life that I was alive. She was always into all that. But I just saw, I saw it as that stuff. I did not think it was important. Uh, I thought it was silly, actually, but I thought it was cute. You know, oh, there goes mom again doing her thing. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So I didn't know anything about it because I prevented myself from learning nor endorsing it nor getting into it. It was just silly to me. So he says, your guides are coming through. So he says, okay, well, what do I do? And he told me, well, when you're in the mood, go home. And when you're at home, ask for them. So as soon as I got home, I closed the 50 locks on my New York apartment mm -hmm. door. And I said, spirit guides, come through. And to my amazement, my head was thrown back off my neck, and this voice starts booming out of me. And I'll tell you, it didn't feel like my voice. Right. Uh, right. And so then I continued to channel, and I started to learn about it. I was fascinated, and I discovered that this is channeling and that I, I was having similar experiences to, uh, for example, uh, the Seth material. I think it's Jane Roberts wrote that book. Uh, I think so. Yeah. Anyway, I was having similar experiences to other people that were channeling, and I was, you know, enjoying it, but still not taking it as anything serious. Again, taking it for granted. I even uh, went with the same gentleman I met in Central Park. I went to his home, and he said, well, if you're channeling now, bring in my guide, the same guide that my famous medium is bringing in for me on a regular basis. So I said, okay. You're funny. Yeah, I know. I mean, I had no idea what to fear. Yeah, I right. had no idea what it was. And I was just completely open. And so I asked that his guy, he wouldn't tell me who the soul was. I So I said, okay. And I let the soul come in. And this energy comes over me like a huge cloud. It goes, whoop. And my consciousness was compressed to a tiny little ball in the upper right portion of my vision field. I was aware that my vocals were being used. I was aware that my body was being used for expression or movement, but I was not aware of how. My eyes were, my vision field was blackened completely, except for that one area there that I could see out of, and I couldn't hear anything. Wild. 
it was wild and the whole conversation went on and then the soul left me and whoop out it went and there I was back in the room and I says what the heck happened what was that all about uh, who was that you know he wouldn't tell me for some reason I don't know why but he just said it was a famous uh, person from the Bible I says okay whatever but I never forgot that you know it's just one of the most amazing experiences and it yeah. really was in fact his guide what from coming from him did he yes oh him? yeah he, he confirmed it was they had a long conversation no, I didn't know what was I didn't know what was said. He didn't want to tell me, and I couldn't force him, so I had to let it go. Man, um, that's that's incredible. I've never heard somebody explain what it feels like to be the channel. So it's like I'm just trying to picture it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, back then I used to feel the whole thing differently. Mm -hmm. uh, I used to feel the energies coming in and leaving. Um, you know, you usually feel a compression of energy come into my uh, auric field, uh, and then I was blended with this other consciousness, uh, and then it feels a little bit like you're a puppet, like as if your vocals are being used, and you know you're talking, and this information is coming, but not from you, from someone else. Mm. Uh, so learning how to do that is a lot of learning to step aside uh, and to sensitize yourself, which is a whole. You know, I've written couple of I've written a whole program on this and I teach people this but anyway so there we went so, but you know still I'm working in the corporate world I'm not paying any attention and my whole life was really geared towards being quote unquote outwardly successful you mm -hmm. know money yeah that kind of a thing and uh I really forged ahead and uh, retired early. I was a self-made millionaire, but a funny thing happened on the way to all of that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, I finally got married. I, you know, everything was like my left brain was pushing it. You know, ego was pushing all of this. But as soon as I arrived on that mountaintop of money and marriage and my ability to manifest, whatever you want to call that, mm -hmm. uh, my mother. Uh, well, my marriage fell apart. Mm -hmm. My money dissipated, started to melt away. Uh, I couldn't manifest anymore. Whatever I'd been doing before wasn't working. Uh, and then my mother got sick. Um, and then she passed. Uh, but it took a while. You know, she was in hospice and all. But So after the marriage ended, I you know, spent a lot of time with my mother. She had cancer uh, as well. You know, I know you had experience with yeah, that, with I your did. own loved one. Yeah. And um, you know, every day I would go to visit her because I was wanted to be around during that process uh, I felt it's as much a miracle transitioning as it is being born and you know when you think about it where do we go uh, you know what's this all about mm -hmm. so um, you know oh, by the way all those years 30 years or so that had transpired or, no now it was I was in my early 50s so you know many years had gone by uh, I had had other experiences most of which was sensing energy from the other side and channeling uh, but anyway there I was mom was ill did my best to help her in any way I could and um, wanted to be around her the closer we got into to her time the less able I was to sit in her room, her bedroom, because apparently the closer she got to passing, the more souls were coming in to be with her. And it got so bad, I couldn't sit in the room. I was agonized by their vibrations. I was like being knocked all over the place. I was getting chills. It was bizarre. And my mother, under the influence of a lot of morphine, piped mm -hmm. up and said to me, you can feel them, can't you? <laughs> wow. You gave me goosebumps. Yeah, she was so sweet. But she could see them, too. She was seeing all kinds of things. She was giving us stories and everything. So she had one foot in the other world. And, you know, that's one of the things I've learned uh, as I've done this uh, last couple of years is that uh, we think of death as a moment. You know, one moment you're here, mm -hmm. next moment you're there. But really, in most cases, unless it's a sudden passing, uh, most cases, particularly with illness, there's a transitionary time when we're kind of getting ready to pass. So we're, we've got one foot over there, you know, and one foot here, and we kind of go back and forth. Um, and so then I, I wasn't motivated one day to channel again I'm always channeling every day through this and my whole life actually ever since I began and I, I asked spirit if there was something that could be done 
to help my mother. Still not in full acceptance, even though she was in hospice. Right. Right. And um, this, they said, wait one moment. And they went out and brought in another spirit, another soul, and he said his name was Serapis. Uh, I didn't know who Serapis was. And Serapis uh, said to me, your mother uh, will be transitioning in a few days. We don't mean to hurt you or harm you. or you know, we, we mean this with love, but there's nothing more you can do. Um, that day I found out Serapis, after I finished the channeling, Serapis was her major, her guide, her a primary guide, and I didn't know it because I never speak to my mother about any of that stuff. Right. Her, her, her husband told me, and wow, it was, <laughs> more goosebumps. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and his name was Serapis Bay, and what he was—he's an ascended master. And Serapis Bay was also um, there's a number of other incarnations he had. If you look up ascended masters, I don't mm -hmm. remember all the other ones, but he was. Um, uh, one of the priests in the mystery schools in Egypt that focused in on the world of spirit and also healing mysteries. So this, so they brought in a healer for me, uh, but also a healer that knew my mother. It was kind of interesting. Mm. Uh, so a couple of days later, I'm sleeping Tuesday. That was on Sunday. Tuesday, uh, sleeping at night, I'm awakened by a three-dimensional astral thing. The dream is real. I open my eyes and there's my mother standing in front of me in an astral projection. Uh -huh. And she says to me, Laura, I love you so much. And then, poof, she's gone. That was the last time, by the way, that day that she ever came back to consciousness. And you might be aware of this, but if you've ever gotten a handbook for, from uh, Vetus or um, uh, you know, hospice, they talk about the transitionary process. Uh, and more often than not, there will be the burst of energy before the last uh, falling into right. coma, right? right? You know, right. familiar with that? Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. So that was her last, you know, that was her last goodbye to me as a human being. Uh, th let's see, Friday. So that was Tuesday. Friday, three days later, she transitions it in the afternoon. We were all there. She managed to, I was there, my sister was there, my husband was there, her best friend who was her spiritual best friend was there, her husband. It was amazing how my mother was able to time her passing when we were all there in the room, but she did it. That night, again, one of those astral dreams, I'm awakened. There's something flying next to me. <laughs> it's like a white cloud, and it's my mother. And because she left her body that day, that's you know, her death day. And she says to me, Laura, it's nothing like you think it is. And she went whirring away. Wow. <laughs> so I guess the message there is no matter what we, you know, no matter how much we study it, no matter how, how much of a front row seat you have to this as a medium or a near death or whatever, whatever you are, researcher, it's not going to be anything we can really comprehend so long as we're in our three-dimensional perspective. Yeah, so many people, even who've had near-death experiences, say there's no words to even vocalize what their feelings were and what they experienced. Absolutely, and um, and so uh, these are the, the you know, this is a couple of stories. So at that time, I decided that I would go, you know, start to take this more seriously, and I started to take some classes. Although I'd been channeling, I'd never really put it to the test with mediumship right uh, right uh, so but I, I went to a couple classes and I found it wasn't really resonating and so that's one of the things I teach for my you know in my uh, classes is how to uh, uh, how to open that connection for me I realized I was already connected I just didn't know I was so I I I help people use whatever their current way is of connecting to spirit uh, to open themselves, as I find that's the natural way to do it. Um, so the more I relaxed into that, and it took, by the way, it took a number of years, oh, you know, sure. cause I, right? Because I kept fighting it. I kept wanting to use my left brain, which is the teaching method. You know, oh, now we're going to we're going to uh, check for names. Uh, just see what names come to you. Well, that's my left brain. Mm -hmm. You know, but I had a, a, a very close 
a compatriot, a colleague who was doing mediumship circles with me, and she just was so natural at it, and I realized I didn't need to go through all these machinations. All I needed to do was channel what I'd already been doing. <clears throat> so the more I let go and the more I channel, the more I get. Um, but even recently, I said to my sister, I said, you know, this is like two, three weeks ago. I said to her, even though I've had all these experiences, even though the mediumship sessions are awe, awe inspiring, uh, you know, jaw dropping at times, sometimes they're not, but you know, more often than not they are, mm -hmm. I said, I still really don't know what this is, mm -hmm. you know. I just don't know. And so she said, well, maybe you're just, you know, psychically accessing the collective unconscious. I said, yeah, possibly. I said, yeah, but, and I'm going to go into the buts in a moment, I don't know. And then she said, well, maybe it's just telepathy or mind reading. I said, yeah, well, maybe, but, and then, you know, maybe it's, it's just, she didn't say this, but I often think, am I projecting, mm -hmm. you know? projecting, you know, because I already know this person's Hispanic, maybe that their loved one would look a certain way or whatever, right. right? But what happened was, this is one of the reasons why I am believing uh, more and more and more, is that spirit seems to respond every time I ask for something. So as soon as I asked for that, my mediumship sessions and the radio shows I do and everything changed. It went from a lot of information to a lot of feeling and being knocked upside the head with energy, and um, information was becoming more and more uh, intelligent instead of it just being flat information. Um, now you know, because you've taken mediumship training, that you're supposed to, as a medium, go for evidence. Right. 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 Uh, but evidence is quite often can be kind of boring and really doesn't fill in the feeling, uh, you know, this person exists, you know, even though they're not physical anymore. It could be just a lot of information, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, so what happened is now the information shows intention behind it. Now the information shows intelligence behind it. Now I'm feeling uh, a lot more. Well, I, I did for a long while, but I'm noticing that an up on that during the radio show, which is, you know, I'm in front of people. It's kind of a little bit embarrassing, especially if I wore mascara. <laughs> I <was> like, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I saw one, and you had a little bit of run of your mascara. Oh, last night's show was that. It was like, uh, by the end, I brought in a woman, um, the last one. There was a couple of things that happened in the show that were kind of interesting, but the last discernment, Jennifer, uh, she wanted, I, I didn't know who she wanted, and I try not to ask because I'm trying to let spirit bring in the evidence. I said, the only person I feel is a mother figure, that was who she was wanting, so that was good. And so finally I developed this mother figure, and uh, it's very, it was a little sloppy, it was a little all over the place. Uh, but I kept seeing this mother showing me herself holding a jar filled with liquid and explaining to me that she did drugs. Okay. Mm, okay. Now I now the girl that Jennifer already told me her mother's like a hippie from the sixties and blah 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 blah. So I just dismissed it, the medium, mm -hmm. as oh yeah, it's just because I'm projecting. Right. You know. Well, what happens is this woman in spirit is insisting she keeps showing me the jar, then she tells me there's vodka in the jar and I start to get the message that she had a drug problem and a drinking problem. And just as I got the implications of that, she hits me upside the head with energy. I'm knocked. I scream on the radio show, I'm knocked. And I start to, you know, tears are coming out my eye. It was it, 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 that kind of stuff. It, it's not the collective unconscious. No. It's not, it's not a projection. This is very real. Mm -hmm. Very, very real. Um, and so I have, you know, many, many stories like that. How do we um, listen to your show? I know I've seen some um, episodes on YouTube. How do you do the actual show? Sure. It's on Blog Talk Radio. Uh -huh. uh, let's see if I could uh, give you the easiest is just to go to my website, just where they give the listeners one thing to remember, which yeah. is spiritmediumlaura.com. If you go there... Mm -hmm. 
you'll see on the main menu radio show which is one of the options on the menu you just click on that it'll take you through uh, but if you went to blog talk radio and you search for spirit medium Laura I'd come up there uh, if you went to YouTube and you searched for Laura Mendelssohn uh, or the myth well, no, that wouldn't give it to you very easily. Just Laura Mendelssohn would give you probably that or mediumship. Uh, but anyway, the, be the best way is just spiritmediumlaura.com and look for the option on the menu radio shows. The simplest. So we can listen live to your radio show and then you're, you also have a camera on yourself that you put these on YouTube after. Is that correct? Yeah, it's simultaneously being broadcast through a Google Hangout uh, so it's a you becomes a YouTube uh, video. It goes to social media and, and is shown at the same time. That's and cool. It is, and then it's also you could just listen uh, on Blog Talk Radio. Can people call in? Oh yeah, yeah. kind of thing. Oh, oh yeah, she says. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and again, I'm I'm not going to give you too much information. No, no, no. It's okay. Just just left me very to... interested and to our listener too when you go to we don't die radio.com and look at Laura Mendelssohn's episode I will have by the time you're listening to this um, a link to the radio show to her website to the YouTube channel etc and so forth for oh, your thank convenience you. yes wow yeah, wow a lot, a lot of stuff a lot of stuff so we, we spoke just a couple minutes before we started about the ego and um, sometimes you don't believe this stuff for yourself or however we were discussing it, that it, it's, it's um, what were we saying? Do you remember? Yeah, I was saying, you know, because this show is all about helping uh, mm -hmm. your audience heal, you know, and move from not believing to understanding that there really is something more. But even though... I, you know, in other words, I listened to your, uh, the last uh, guest you had on the prior show, and he was explaining how he knows. He doesn't believe he knows. And I'm thinking, do I know? I'm not sure I know. I right. don't know what I know. <laughs> uh, here I am, you know, getting hit upside the head with energy, uh, being revealed things I'd have no way of knowing. I'm not projecting it. I'm not looking for it. Sometimes it's so embarrassing almost because I'm afraid to say it. Um, right. You know, uh, so I'm not I'm not projecting, uh, and then sometimes the information the sitter is uh, denying it, but spirit has an intention there of what they want the sitter to do for them on earth, things like that. That's not just flat information. It's intention. It's intelligence. It's visceral. It's unexpected. It's not requested, and it's certainly something I don't know. Right. Right. So. Uh, and then my mother says to me, it's nothing like you think it is, so what is it, Mom, you know, um, <laughs> you know, and I was, uh, part of this is I just recently lost my aunt, oh, uh, sorry. My mom, yeah, my mother's sister, and then I also lost her daughter, my cousin, wow. to a young, she's young, to a brain tumor, and I said to my sister, I says, I don't get any messages from them. You know, where do they go? I get ton you know, my clients are, you know, they get tons of messages for everyone else. But um, so that makes you sort of wonder, you know, what is really going on? You know, anyway, as a, a human being, everybody out there listening, you as a human being, you have several parts to yourself. And one of the parts, which is the little uh, demon, is the part that's analytical, mm -hmm. right? Is the part that's going to say, yeah, but. And then there's that other part of you that knows, has an instinct knows, you're intuitive, you know, you know. So it, within us at any one point in time, we'll have various uh, various levels or, you know, amounts uh, of each of these people inside of ourselves, you know, each of these sides of ourselves. So um, I, you know, it's not needed that I believe. I don't really need to know. Uh, I do need to surrender because mm -hmm. of my work, uh, and I do. Uh, I consider myself a servant. Uh, I consider myself a person that has been, um, what's the word for it? Uh, I didn't volunteer to do this. Uh, I was uh, sort of martyred to do this, or it's part of my life purpose to do this work. Mm -hmm. Because, and that's a whole other thing, because we, you know, we all have a purpose. 
And um, many, many people right at this time on Earth are finding whatever worked for them before is sort of was swiped away. Uh, in your case is another example of oh, through definitely. Right? Cataclysmic experience, terrible losses, not just of your father, but of, uh, you know, family peace and everything yeah. else, right? And, yeah, and I never expected I'd be doing this. Right? Ever. Yeah. Exactly. So you're sort of, it's a problem, it is a soul contract, a soul plan, uh, that you are one of those that has come to Earth this lifetime uh, to expand human consciousness through your work and I as well and so what happens is if I try to veer off the track I start to get a little more materialistic mm -hmm. and I try to get into my investments again or whatever I'm always whacked upside the head experientially by that's not going to work for you this is what's going to work for you so I, I do my work I love my work I feel very blessed um, very privileged that I'm able to do it and I get to see miracles on a daily basis. Oh, it is it is really quite uh, quite an honor. Um, and I you know I do the best I can. Uh, it's not always perfect. You know, there's sometimes I've noticed uh, that there's some people that you can't pull in for them. Uh, and I've come to realize that some people are so deeply. You, you love this subject, grief. They're so deeply steeped in grief uh, that they might, that their minds can, I, I learned this from you, and maybe that's why it happens, but they can't understand what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. They can't understand, they deny it. Uh, they might be in the denial stage of grief. Uh, they may be angry. Uh, whatever it is, their grief is so severe that they're not getting uh, what's coming through nor willing to even accept it, hear it, understand it. Uh, so there are times when mediumship is not the right solution for grief, mm -hmm. uh, but in general it is just an amazing process. Do you have any favorite stories, stories are always are good things, of just maybe even the time that you reconnected somebody or you brought somebody through that was real fun or just really wowed you or you were so specific that I mean anything that you can share I know you have the confidentiality thing going on but do you have any stories like that well yeah I do but you know I didn't I don't remember a lot but what I do I was because oh, you're, you're in such in the moment and being the channel right <laughs> I, did, yeah. I forgot about that piece sometimes you know you just... yeah but you know what I was trying to prepare for the show I did prepare for the show not trying I did and um, what I was doing was gathering the stories uh -huh. around around the subject of belief versus not belief but certainly last night on the radio show I can uh -huh. tell you this I can tell you any of the stories I can always change the name so it's not a problem okay but I have a lot of public material that's available as well so for example last night I uh, there was a gentleman by the name of Tony who called in. I spoke to him earlier on the day, uh, during the day, uh, and I knew who he wanted. I wasn't sure I could bring her in because he was still in that phase of grief, mm -hmm. uh, which I was a little bit, it was so severe that I wasn't sure. So I said, call the radio show. So um, you know, I described who I see, and it's correct. Uh, and then the thing that was kind of funny is she starts, she gives me the word juca, like Y-U-C-C-A, you know, the plant from South America. I think it's mostly Peruvian, so like a root plant. Yep, uh-huh. I never knew how to pronounce it, but there you go. There you go. Uh-huh. <laughs> and she starts telling me about his favorite food is juca, and he starts to laugh. And No, first of all, as I hear it, I think... I don't know if I, I said to him, I don't know if I could say this. I don't know if it relates to you because, to be honest, I had no idea what his ethnicity was. I didn't know anything about him. As a matter of fact, I thought he might have been African-American, mm -hmm. not Hispanic and not South American. So so I said yucca, and he starts to laugh because his mother said that was his favorite food, yucca. He starts to laugh. He says, yeah, that was my favorite food, and it was so cute. You know, it was another example when you get things you don't expect, uh, you know, as a medium, and you're not really fishing for that. Then another thing that no. happened during 
uh, you're not fishing for it, you don't know, you don't expect it. So you should see this intelligence there behind all this. Then she gives me the name Mar Maricel or Maribel or Mary or something. And I'm afraid to say it again because uh, for the last two days I had the name Mary come in twice in two different discernments and the, the name was correct both times and I thought well maybe I'm projecting the name again yeah exactly right yeah so I, I you know as a medium you have to give what you get you have to do that uh, and there's many reasons why which I won't go into now so I, I give him the name I said I don't know I'm getting a name Maribel you know Mary something like that I said do you understand this name he says yes then his mother says through me, I thank you, son, Tony, for uh, racking your brain to remember whose name it is, as it's not my name. <laughs> oh. I was like, and I'm standing there like, oh, my God. It wasn't just a name. She, no. She just basically, I think it was one of his grandmothers, I think. Yeah. Uh, she's giving that detail, level of detail. So, you know, this happens regularly. Yeah. I, I've met with enough mediums and even had my own medium readings that, the, and some of the stuff is, yeah, maybe, but some was so friggin' specific that there's, there's no way. And nor would you take the time to research people and find this out, and that's all crazy yeah. I mean it is, it is specific good stuff yeah now there was another one on Sunday I did a trans circle at my home and this lovely woman attended whom I'd been working with for a while she had a very severe grief after losing her husband mm. and, you know I do I don't want them to be they're not a, she's not addicted to getting sessions with me there's always a space between sessions and so on and so forth mm -hmm. Uh, but this is kind of interesting. Um, on Sunday, her husband is trying to say through me to her, and she's completely not understanding, nor is she not, she's not mean to me or anything. She's not saying, you don't know what you're doing. She's saying, I don't understand, because he kept saying, there's a birthday besides our wedding anniversary. There's a birthday in June that is coming up. He also says, I want you to send a card, a birthday card, you know, I want you to connect with my sons or something like that. Uh -huh. uh, and so she's not getting the whole thing. She's not getting the whole thing. I said, there's a birthday around this time of the year. I believe it's in June or July. I said, and he's insisting on this, and it's not a wedding anniversary. It's nothing like that. And there were a couple of other pieces of information that went with that. So anyway, I finished the circle, and after it's all done, and I stopped the recording, shucks, she says, <laughs> oh, I remember now. She says, his son, who, by the way, I'm estranged from, back to the families breaking up yeah. after passing, both his sons won't talk to her anymore. His son's birthday is June 16th, which is today, by the way. And so... His, her husband, in spirit, wanted her to send a birthday card to his son for his birthday, and the whole oh. thing connected. Yeah, and she was all nervous because she's estranged from them. It might have been um, inheritance issues. I don't know. We never discussed what it was. Uh, I don't know what she did with the whole thing, but it's you know it's kind of awkward for her. She doesn't know what to do about that, but that's what her husband wanted. Yeah, you, you never know. I had um, talked to a medium on the show, and I, I didn't record this part. It was after we had finished or before we had started, and, you know, I wanted just some insight because I still have stuff going on with, with my siblings, and um, and he he came right out and he said, you know, uh, you got one sibling who's still got a lot of anger, and leave him alone and you know and you know he doesn't know anything about me the guy we I had talked yeah. to and then sure. even just said you know that I have a sister that her belief is that I'm another person other than who I am right now like her view oh. her perception and it, it all stems from when dad had died you know it, and really convinced herself that I was whether it was greedy or you know I wanted more of his stuff or whatever but that this unreal view of me is what she believes believes is me you know, and so, you know, and I had simply asked him, you know, any insight? Does dad say anything about my siblings? Because, you know, I, I really wish I could tell everybody that, yeah, I've written this book and I'm out helping people and I've got this perfect life. And I, you know what, Laura, I don't actually think we're 
not that we're not meant to, but I mean, life really is a journey. It's about experiences. It's about overcoming fear. Uh, even my younger sister, it took me a long time to even get up the nerve to even pick up the phone and call. Even mm. She didn't answer. I mean, it was really about me being courageous. And, and, and I don't know if we're meant to remember 24-7 the big picture of, you know, being these infinite powerful souls here on Earth having an experience, you know, because it would take the uh, kind of, and I don't say the fun out of life, but um, I don't know. I think we're, we're meant to be just as human. And, you know, I personally love hearing your stories because you're you're a lot like me like I can understand because you're going through the same stuff and I think that's part of the the gift we all are you know nobody wants to see somebody perfect 24 7 yeah he's got a great life like that's not inspiring but give me somebody who was down in the trenches and then overcame <laughs> something yeah that's the person I want to listen to yeah. Um, yeah you know I don't know but you you really are a, a gift to people and and you're easy to listen to and and I can't I really can't wait to watch more of you on the the videos I don't know if I'll be able to tune in live to your shows but I love that they're recorded and we can see them at a oh, at a later date because that's awesome and you might need to invest in a little waterproof mascara that might be my only tip <laughs> yeah my girlfriend that rings your eyelashes so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna have to go uh, more bare face you're ah! so funny you're so funny so there no insight what spirit world is like from what your mom said it's nothing like you think it is but any no uh, I do have or... a lot of I do have a lot of insight what do you what do you think what do you, what do you know what do you think whatever What's... yeah well it you know it's very similar what to what you've heard before um again I was listening to one of your last interviews and it's very very similar what I've gotten is that there are Everybody moves to where they belong in consciousness. Uh, it's an energetic world uh, versus three-dimensional. But there are grades of this energy. Some energy is a little bit more static as an astral plane, where it's more like an Earth place. Uh, and you know, quite often I'm getting, uh, you know, as a medium, we are connecting with souls in the astral. A high astral vibration and very, very infrequently low causal, which is a higher frequency. Uh, so you'll get, I'll get a gamut of different kinds of souls, but most of them are going to give me anecdotes of like a life that is similar to Earth, playing cards still, doing their favorite things, even eating their foods. Hmm. That's even good to hear, because, yeah, let's hear a little bit about that, because I didn't think we had bodies to do that. Well, you know, they have we? bodies as per their creation, uh, you know, as per your projection. Um, and you, I mean, look, I don't really know personally, but oh, I'm, just, I know. I'm the reporter here. Right. I'm the person that's been there in the trenches. Uh, but what I hear is an energetic body uh, and that they're, you know, I don't really do, I would like to do more of that. I actually want to do more mediumship, but it's it. what I do here is energetic body. Uh, enjoying life as if they're on earth, a uh, lot of beauty, a sense of what experiencing timelessness is like, uh, which is kind of interesting. I want to dwell on that for a moment. Uh, that if you could imagine you uh, say, soccer stadium, stadium or football stadium, uh, and that uh, in the stadium are different times that are just happening. They're always happening in your life. And yet you could pop from any one location to another location. So everything's at the same time, and you're just going in and out at different places as per your desire. Uh, you know, being able to come into Earth and then go back uh, out to spirit. It's not every soul can do that. Uh, you have to have certain privileges. Certain souls who have committed suicide, some of them are in a very happy place. Others are more in a waiting place or a place of contemplation. Uh, and some of them still hold uh, energies or uh, outlook or consciousness that needs to be healed. And some and they will come through during sessions. Um, some, I don't think of a few other things. Oh, this is another interesting thing, is that if they've had a long illness uh, that was very debilitating, traumatic, mm -hmm. 
they might have, uh, they will maybe at first not come through that clearly, then another time I'll have a session they're coming through more clearly, or at the beginning I have to crack through certain layers before I get that clear connection. Um, but what I've learned or they'll tell me is that they're still healing or they're still in a place of rest. Uh, so there seems to be some kind of a, um, an a, a room, like a precedent room, where you sit in and then you can, before you move on into your final location, uh, depending on you know how you go into spirit. Uh, there are some that have had accidents, and then they'll describe you know what they saw. Uh, like uh, one of them was a, a he was very clear. Oh my God, this was such a clear discernment. Uh, he had been in an auto accident, and I didn't know anything. Of course, I knew the woman who was call, who wanted the session, but I didn't know anything except her brother-in-law had passed away. So he explains to me what happened during the accident. He explains to me he didn't die right away. He explains to me how he died. What had happened was he had had a cut to his neck and to his heart area that was so severe he bled slowly to death for two hours oh. because nobody found them. Yeah. And um, all that was verified by the hospital uh, and the police reports because I didn't know. Mm -hmm. So she was getting all the validation. Um, he said though that he didn't feel a lot of pain So because as soon as he got the injury he left his body and watched it. So, you know, quite often I'll hear if somebody was in an accident, they leave the body right before the accident or at the time of the accident, and they're not, you know, sitting in the body uh, feeling anything. Interesting. So that's you know what? Yeah. I'm, I'm just interrupting because my dad died a painful death, and somebody had said that maybe he wasn't in his body at the end there, and I thought, oh, wouldn't that be great? I mean, you still see a body that's suffering, but sure, sure would be a nice thing to think that maybe he could have checked out early, you know? Yeah, well, it, it depends on how, you know, what it was like, but I'm sure that there are people that do suffer, but what yeah. I'm trying to say yeah. is if there's a traumatic injury, uh, let's say a fatal heart attack mm -hmm. or a, a blow to the head, uh, you know, whatever it is, if some people are instantly killed. Right. And that's when they jump out of the or they're out of the body before or at the time. Uh -huh. uh, if you know, if there was some lingering on Earth, you know, if your your father was killed instantly, though you're telling me basically, uh, he probably didn't feel much. Oh well, yeah, well, yeah. Dad had cancer and he suffered till the the last moments. Um, anyways. Uh, I'm taking the subject off me, off you. No, 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 it's fine. No, no, we, it's important to discuss this. Cause well, yeah, because you know what? I'm not the only one, am I? And, you know, it's so funny because um, my ego kicks in, too. And, uh, you know, I, even though I have this show to share, you know, I love finding out things that help me in my life as well. But I have to remember that, you know, there's somebody listening right now who's got a loved one that might be suffering from cancer and might be in the final days. And, you know, and it, I think... I don't think there's too much new under the sun, and our stories... Your story's important. ...are important, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, let me just say, I have had people that died of cancer or other illnesses that report when they're coming in from the other side, it was a relief to leave my body. Mm -hmm. Then there are others who were so drugged up or so out of it uh, that they didn't even know when they left their body. It was back and forth for quite a while. So there's all different kinds of transitions all different kinds. Wow. I, um, I'm looking at the clock and we only have, I well, got several minutes left, but I want to just ask what, what gives you the most passion in life right now? You know? <laughs> That's what, are you, what are you up to? What is it that, I mean, cause I know you love to write cause you've got, oh God, four or five books, right? You know what is my, my yeah exactly I, and those I'm self publishing yeah. uh, you know the only one that I've been published in is the one you mentioned earlier but uh, they are, these I'm self publishing mm -hmm. and they're part of the training but the training starts with my passion uh, which is metaphysics uh, and the connection right now I'm very passionate about the connection between our perception and our experience. Uh, the connection between what we are sending out and what we are pulling back in, uh, you know, way beyond the law of attraction to metaphysics. Uh, I've been studying recently um, 
Lynn McTaggart's work, who was in What the Bleep Do We Know, yeah. that movie, and she's a science reporter, and she specializes in the connection between spirituality and, sci and proving it. Uh, and right now, she's doing the Intention Experiment, which is a website where she um, she's engaged, I believe, uh, I don't mean to marry, <laughs> I mean uh, working on a project with uh, Dr. Gary Schwartz. Uh-huh. Uh, I've heard him speak. Yeah, he's f wonderful. Oh, yeah, you, I think you might have been at one of his conferences. Yeah. I saw that video there. So he's, you know, from the Veritas uh, Research uh, Institution, part of uh, Arizona State University. And um, he's done a lot of research on the afterlife. He wrote the afterlife experiments, which came out in the early 2000s. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so if anybody wants proof, go. You know, that's another great uh, source of information. So she's now doing the uh, the intention experiments with him, and they they're they're creating experiments where um, a group of healers, for example, uh, send information to a leaf to expand its energetic field, and they're able to take pictures of the field after and before and after a group of healers would be sending intention to the leaf to up its energy. Uh, and so what they're doing is they're showing the connection between uh, the spirit world or this intangible world, the non-physical world, and the physical world. And we are, you and I, are have incarnated in a time when the line between the energetic world and the physical world is blurry. The the the, the actual uh, difference between the two is getting more and more blurry, and I'm very fascinated by that. Yes, as am I. <laughs> okay, that's well, that, good that's stuff. Good. I just had a picture of the leaf and the intention, and just like there's so much out there when we really start to explore that is mind-boggling and fascinating and. But it takes keeping yourself interested and having a book by your bedside or on your Kindle or whatever to um, keep, what am I trying to say, Put, putting yourself out there and learning and keeping stuff around you. And I think even you doing your radio show and doing your private readings with people and, and stuff like that, it, it keeps you in the game. Because left to our own devices, I think the left brain wants to kick in and you know, do something else or tell us that we're crazy or whatever, right? <laughs> yeah, well, you know, this is, and I, the, I know we're at the end, but I just want to say, <laughs> I uh, my whole life has been structured that if I didn't uh, adopt the spiritual, I would have become homeless. Uh, I've lost $2 million. I had to go from being retired, wow, financially independent, to asking God for help. And so I, I survived because I did open to spirit. And I believe, that's the meaning and the theme of my first book, that when we align with our purpose, our abundance flows from that. And I believe that I was supposed to discover this and then teach to other people. Now, I'm not the only one doing that, but, you know, in my particular case, that's why I call myself a martyr, <laughs> because, I'm, you know, I, I had to let go of a lot of uh, three-dimensional left-brain stuff to live in this world, mm -hmm. and I'm supposed to help other people discover that. And so that truly is my passion. The mediumship and the other side and all that is part of it, but the big picture for me, my huge umbrella is a connection between mind and matter between how we connect to spirit and create our lives. Uh, and when we align with our purpose, we get the most magical elixir from spirit to help us. Ah, oh, that might be our closing words. But what if we don't know what our, our purpose is? Well, there's a, a my very inexpensive book will give you an outline of that. Or you basically, it's OK, I'll just say this. Just say it. Just very, very simply, follow your intuition, which is your feelings. Let go of trying to control things, open to what you really love, vibrate at that frequency by engaging in it. That's L-O-V-E, that spells L-O-V-E. Follow love and you will find your purpose and you will find your abundance. Oh, that's really happy. And I know personally, I thought, I mean, I thought it's many things over the course of my life. But then I wrote the book and I thought, well, this is good getting to share but it still wasn't enough, and, and it wasn't until I actually created this program, 
where I can talk to like-minded people, continue to learn, and then share, because I love to share and I love to give presents. And, um, and so, uh, you know, I'm finding it. And obviously it's not about making money or selling my book or selling you to the audience. And, you know, sure, that happens sometimes, but it really is to share. And, and I love it. I really do love it. And you are very gifted as a communicator, and that's not an accident either. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> it's been so fun. Well, Laura Mendelson, thank you for being a guest on our show today. And I want to remind our listener to check out Laura's website at spiritmediumlaura.com. And don't forget to join her mailing list. And you're in a contest then to win a free session with her, which yeah. is awesome yeah 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 and, and check out her um youtube videos and her radio show and it really you know i've had people that i've told some of my stories to and even though there was no medium reading done or i didn't work personally with them just hearing the stories is just enough to let you know that you know your loved ones are still around they're okay you know your life my life laura's life is for a purpose and to go for it and experience and find joy and love and things and and don't be afraid uh, and don't be caught up in the illusion that there's an end to it so in closing my name is sandra champlain i hope you've enjoyed the show i do believe that life is an education for the soul and that your life here is important remember to go to we don't die radio.com if you haven't been there before check out some of the past episodes um, share us with your friends and again thanks for listening and we'll see you soon